Hey you, what's up? So welcome to the very first edition of Storytime on Conversation Street and it is me Ted Wright and I get a hosting you for today and this is our very first story and it's titled The Call so you wait for more. Tendai Beast Mtawadira was born on the 1st of August in 1985 in Zimbabwe, Harare, and he basically was raised in Harare, went to Prince Edward School for his high school, and he was a very good rugby player, nicknamed The Beast. Um, so um, in 2007, he decided to move to South Africa in search of greener pastures and better opportunities. You know, the situation in Zimbabwe wasn't looking too colorful. And so, um, basically, after getting a lot of discouragement, even from his father, you know, his father personally told him, you're going to face some giants and they'll probably crush you. And I bet that was heartbreaking. And basically, he was told you wouldn't make it by lots of people. So in 2007, with a backpack, boots, 2000 runs, and a discman, he left for his dream to play rugby for the Sharks in Durban, South Africa. Little did he know that what was in store for him was a whole lot of trouble. But hey, what's the fun in getting successful if there is no trouble? So here's what happened. Getting to South Africa, he got a job with the Sharks. He was working legally in South Africa, but he still faced deportation threats. And he was working side gigs as a bouncer and a bartender just to make ends meet. So, um, you know, uh, whilst she was working legally, um, the South African uh, Home Affairs Department, it, it refused him the chance to, 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 to be given a South African passport so that he could travel more easily and everything. Um, so he, he was basically not guaranteed of a bright future as a sportsman and, and, and being deprived of that hope is just something else, especially after one of his most successful years in 2009. Um, he beat the All Blacks, the, he was involved, he was, he was part of the team which beat the All Blacks three times in a row and they won the, the, the British and Lions tour. Um, that was just in a year, you know, in 2009. So there are rumors that, you know, politics came into play and that the politicians who were in South Africa then, rugby and a black person being on a national rugby team didn't exactly represent what they thought they stood for at that time. You know what they say, um, behind every successful man is a very supportive woman and so happens to be in the case of the beast. And so um, it so happens that, uh, you know, uh, during these tough times and everything, um, Tendai and his wife, Kuziva Makorem Tawarira, um, they were constantly praying and, you know, they went in one of the best spaces and things weren't looking up very much for them. And so, here is what happens. Miracle. Um... One day, um, the beast is sitting hopeless and everything, and guess who calls? Desmond Tutu, the Ark. And these are, these are his first words. He says, um, I know you, I support you, I'm such a fan, and you're such a role model to the young people. And those words blew him off. You know, they literally blew him off. He even remembers going to the gym to work out that day because he was feeling it. You see, there's some people who are just emblems of hope and their heart is just made of pure gold. You know, um, so he told the beast, um, don't worry, you will be able to play for the spring box, basically. And the rest is history. Everything turned around. The next day, the minister called, called him um and he, he told him the minister who was then i believe um dr nkosazana lamini zuma who called him and told him that um he could basically go and pick up his passport and he was going to be given a south african passport and things were really looking great for him hey and uh, you know that's the way everything turned around you know and boom fast forward 
We've got the Beast and he's one of the most successful black players up until his recent retirement. So um, here's what we really want to talk about. We want to talk about compassion. So yesterday I was listening to this guy called Varun Somi. He's and he's he's um, a chaplain for spirituality. I think at the USC, the University of Southern California. I think. So um, you see, it's it's a very with over forty seven thousand students base and and every every country in the world represented and every nationality, everything that anybody could believe in represented in that one campus you know he says that we are in a in a period of the spiritual crisis of compassion eh? and uh, he says from his words he says that if our evolution means that we get better ways to fight tribal wars or more efficient ways to kill each other then we have totally missed missed the opportunities given by technology you see all it took was a call a call that's technology to spread the love from Bishop Desmond Tutu. So in 1938, um, 200 undergrads from Harvard were put under what is the longest longitude, the longest longitudinal study of human development ever in history. For 75 years, um, Harvard studied basically how they would grow up and whether they would grow up to be successful. You can research about it. It's called the Grand Study, and. It came up to one simple conclusion. The conclusion was that the most important thing in your life is the depth and quality of your loving relationships. Nothing more, nothing less. It's not the money, it's not the job. You can, you can, yeah, Harvard. Harvard literally translates into high paying job and a good life. But this research, the grand study shows that the most important thing is the depth and quality of your loving relationships. I think this is powerful. This is really powerful. Can we give Jesus an amen for this? You know, because he is love and, you know, it's, 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 it's a powerful thing when, you know, love is personified into us. And basically this translates to we are love. And so this day, I just want to pose a question to you. Hey, how do you handle your, your, your relationships, how do you handle the, the depth and quality of your relationships? And um, how do you use the technology in your life? What do you think about it? Hey, did, how often do you call someone just to say hi? Hey, how's it? To improve someone's situation, you know, to give someone hope. And, you know, basically, so we're talking about the call here, you know. When was the last time you called someone just to say, hey, hi, um, how are you doing? I love what you're doing. I support you and keep keep pushing on. You know, that would literally change someone's life. You know, you might not be the arc, but you hold love in you. You are love personified. So, hey, thank you so much for listening to us. And um, these are just some thoughts we're sharing with you. And see you next time. So, it's peace. Cheers, eh?